I'm going to go through how to build a mechanism design model for types. And of course, with mechanism design, we know that the designer, for example, the business, is either going to try to sort types of people into different products, or, or they're going to try to incentivize behavior. So this video focuses on types, and I'm actually going to start with a classic example and try to add some complexity to this model. So I have another video on uh, airlines and mechanism design in airlines. I will post that below. But this is sort of the next level up. This is for someone who already knows how to build their own models. How do you build models that, that sort of go beyond the really simplistic problems that you get in your microeconomics course? So here we have a classic incentive compatibility constraint. Let me write that. And the, the business, the designer of the mechanism design, is the airline who's trying to maximize profits. And the constraint is from the customer's perspective. So um, we want to set the price of first class tickets such that for those people who we want to uh, channel into first class seats, for them, the value of the first class seat minus the price they pay for the first class seat is greater than the value of the coach class seat minus what the price they pay for the coach class seat. And of course, um, th this is somewhat obvious, but our goal here as an airline is to try to figure out what is the price of each of these tickets and we use some mechanisms to do that. Now, um, I'm going to actually uh, think about this to think about how would I want to add complexity to this problem. And to do that, I might sort of think about which assumptions here am I just annoyed with. So I'm kind of annoyed with how simple value is, value to the first class uh, passenger. Well, what, why do they value the first class ticket more and, and the coach class ticket less? Well, it's because coach seats on an airplane are really uncomfortable. So I would actually like to define a variable, which is how uncomfortable does the airline need to make the coach class seats? in order to force the first class customers into those first class seats. So I've defined this variable, discomfort of coach seats, and this is actually going to become a choice variable for the airlines. Now, um, the other thing that annoys me about this is that when you look at these problems in the way they appear in micro textbooks, they only have two types. High types, in other words, rich people, and low types, which is everybody else. And that annoys me because the world doesn't come in, uh, in types that are so clearly distinguished. So I would actually like to add a little bit of complexity by making type into a continuous variable. And I'll let that variable be income. And of course, if you have income as the variable, that could work well with models that you're simulating where you're using actual real world data with people's income. So I'm going to start this problem by actually thinking from the airline's perspective, and then we'll move into the consumer's perspective after that. So our choice variables that the airline is deciding on are the price of first class, the price of coach, and the discomfort of coach seats. Three choice variables. We're maximizing profit, so price times quantity for both uh, first class seats and coach seats. And the number of people who choose the first class seats has is going to be a function of both prices and also the discomfort level of coach class seats number of coach class seats depends on the same thing. And of course, because uh, planes are have a fixed number of, uh, a fixed amount of space, we might have some constraint like the number of first class plus number of coach seats has to be less than or equal to the total number of seats on a plane. Now we could make this more complicated if we acknowledge that first class seats take up more space, but one of the tricks with modeling is that you can't add too much complexity. So I just want to um, simplify this by saying, okay, uh, these have to add up to the total number of seats on the plane. I could relax that assumption later, but I don't think that would really help with the intuition I'm trying to achieve through the model, so I probably won't. Now the key here is that we're going to recognize that this, um, this variable, number of people choosing first class seat and number choosing coach, 
That is the result of somebody else's maximization problem. And whose maximization problem? Well, that's the customer's. So we need to build a customer model. Now, the first step is to figure out what is the customer choosing, what is their choice variable, and they're choosing their ticket, and the ticket, of course, comes from a set of three different options, and those three different options are first class ticket, coach ticket, or no ticket at all. Now, when I'm building any model, it's, it's always helpful to um, build these cost-benefit tables. So our first cost-benefit table might be, okay, first class, what's the benefit of first class? What's the cost of first class? Where the benefit is comfy and that you get to travel. The cost of first class is the money, the price. And then I could do a cost benefit table for each of the other options. The benefit of coach seat is that you get to travel. The cost of the coach seat is going to be the money you have to spend and the discomfort. And then we need a table for the benefit and cost of our no ticket option. Benefit of not flying is you don't spend money. Cost of not flying is that you don't travel. So you don't always have to do that step, but I think it's helpful when you're modeling. If you're feeling stuck about how to set up a model, just make sure that the, the most important parts of this table appear somewhere in your model. So I see travel, there needs to be some kind of value from traveling. I see, well, discomfort, and of course discomfort and comfort will be the same variable. I don't need to have two different variables in the model, that would be redundant. And of course there needs to be something for money and price, and that's it. So let's do that. So the value of traveling, I'm calling that T, that's a function of which of these three options you choose minus the discomfort you feel during the flight, which is of course a function of which you choose, minus the price you pay, which is a function of which one you choose. Now if we look at these three functions, we could actually simplify these functions quite a bit. So we could say uh, your value for traveling is going to be equal to uh, T if you buy a ticket, so if coach or first class, and zero if, uh, if you don't buy a ticket. With the discomfort, we can say discomfort, that function of T is going to be uh, D if, and of course D here is an exogenous variable that's the discomfort that the airline builds into the ticket. Of course, this is a choice variable for the airline. And then this, the value for traveling is, is also exogenous in the way I'm defining it here. So discomfort if you get a coach class ticket and zero if you get first class or if you're not traveling. And then P, um, our price of our ticket is going to be price of first class. If we get a first class ticket, so our price is PF if the first class ticket, and of course PF is a choice variable for the airline, PC, price of coach, if we get coach, and zero if we don't get a ticket. So all three of our functions here are fairly simple functions. Now there's something that's missing from this model, which is income. We remember that we were trying to separate out the types of people based on income. Because we do want some people choosing first class, some people choosing coach, some people not buying tickets, we want to capture that variety. So the question now becomes income, it's an exogenous variable in this model, meaning we need to stick income somewhere in this model. And when I look at this, the natural place to put income relates to the money spent. We know that the, the price is going to be less painful for higher income people. So let me um, actually make a mistake here, but this is a mistake that students would likely make when they're building this model, and then we'll fix the mistake just like everybody does when they're building models. You, you write something down, you notice that it doesn't quite make sense, and you fix it such that it does make sense. That's a natural part of the process. Okay, so now let me read the model, and I read this as the price you're paying, which is a cost, depends on the ticket you choose, well that makes a lot of sense, and your income. Well actually no, that's not how it works, you can't engage in price discrimination if you're an airline, so this actually does not work logically. 
So now we need to back up and say, wait a second, how can I design this term, this money term, such that uh, the cost of paying for that ticket is less painful to a rich person than to a poor person? And there's different ways we could do this. I could define P as the pain from money lost. I could define it as financial hit to the person from paying t for the ticket. I could define it as opportunity cost of the ticket. In other words, if they weren't going to buy that ticket, what else would they be spending the money on? And for really low income people, they'd be spending it on food and really necessary things. For high income people, they'd be spending it on something super frivolous like uh, buying uh, 200 more books for the, for the year or whatever. So I'm actually going to turn this into opportunity cost. Um, where price is going to be built into opportunity cost. Okay, I've set this up so that we have opportunity cost, which is what you're giving up by buying the ticket, depends on the price you pay for the ticket, which depends on which ticket you choose, and opportunity cost, how painful that is, also depends on your income. So I've now built in the type as a continuous variable that affects one part of the problem. Now, I want to point out something else here, which is that how uncomfortable is a coach class seat? It actually could be that you could put income inside here, like maybe rich people are more used to having a luxurious lifestyle, so for them it's super uncomfortable to be in those coach class seats because they've never done it before and they have to get used to it. Um, so it would be reasonable to put I in here, but I'm going to keep the model simple and just keep I in the opportunity cost. Now our next step would be to actually write out an incentive compatibility constraint that's related to this model. So let me make space for that. We want to make sure that customers that we're channeling toward first class for those people, their utility for first class tickets is greater than or equal to their utility for coach tickets. So now we just need to plug uh, those in here. And of course, we could just plug in F for every T up here. So I could do like T F minus D F. But if we look at the, um, the functions we've already defined, we see that uh, the value for travel is going to be equal to T. If they get a first class ticket, um, the discomfort is going to be zero, so we can leave that out, minus opportunity costs that they have to pay. If they're paying the first class price and they have income, whatever their income happens to be. And that needs to be greater than or equal to um, the, well, two things actually. So the incentive compatibility constraint, it needs to be greater than or equal to uh, the coach ticket. And then participation constraint is it needs to be greater than or equal to not buying a ticket. So um, if they got the coach class ticket, we plug in coach for all of the tickets here and we get the, they still get their trip if they get coach, but they have to pay the uh, discomfort price of D and they have opportunity cost, which is a little bit less that they have to pay if they pay price of coach and they have whatever income they have. So this is our incentive compatibility constraint. Now let's do our participation constraint, which is basically utility from the first class ticket is greater than or equal to utility from no ticket. Well, we've already figured out our utility for the first class ticket up here, which is the value of the trip minus the opportunity cost that they experience from paying the first class price at their certain level of income and their utility for no ticket, well, this is zero, no travel, no discomfort, no opportunity cost, so that's just going to be zero. So that's how you add a little bit more meat to a model of mechanism design for the airline problem.